Good evening, and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Geraldine Torellis. And I'm Edison LaCour. Thank you for joining us. We have crews out across the state, from the Republican Watch Party in Scottsdale, the Democratic Watch Party in Phoenix, and in Tucson for the Mark Kelly Watch Party. We'll get to each of them in just a moment, but first, Cronkite News reporter Yuri Hahn joins us live now from downtown Phoenix at the Democrats Watch Party. Yuri, what's going on out there? I am inside Renaissance Hotel, and as you can see, there's already a crowd forming right behind me. Just a second ago, Katie Hobbs was on stage as the crowd cheered Katie, Katie, Katie. Candidates like Chris Mays, Adrian Fontes, and other representatives are here as well. One of the big issues we've seen today was that lawsuit submitted by the Republican National Committee, Blake Masters and Carrie Lake, to extend that voting period to 10 p.m., but a judge denied it today, so the deadline will be 7 p.m. tonight. I will keep you updated as the night goes live in Phoenix. Yuri on Cronkite News. Thank you, Yuri. Cronkite News reporter Ashley Engel joins us live now from Maricopa County's Election Central, where ballots are being counted. Ashley, what are you seeing out there? Yes, good evening. I'm here at the Maricopa County Tabulation Center where the polls have closed at 7 p.m. And earlier today, Chairman Earlier today, Chairman Bill Gates has addressed that there were printing issues. The Republican National Committee, National Republican Sentinel Committee, and Arizona GOP candidates Carrie Lake and Blake Masters have filed a lawsuit to keep the polls open longer in Maricopa after some tabulation printers were having printing issues. Now, Chairman Bill Gates is well aware of the lawsuits, but he believes that they are staffed up as a county to address those lawsuits and will provide the courts the information that they need. Reporting in Phoenix, Ashley Engel, Cronkite News. Thank you, Ashley. Cronkite News reporter Carolina Hassett joins us live now from Scottsdale, the GOP watch party. Carolina, what's going on over there? As you can see, the room behind me is a lot more crowded than it was earlier in the day today. There's been a lot of excitement and cheers and even a couple boos as the voters are watching the results coming in. The watch party began with GOP chairwoman Kelly Ward kicking things off. And when it comes to other speakers in the evening, we'll keep you updated as we get more information. In Scottsdale, Carolina Hassett, Cronkite News. Thank you, Carolina. Cronkite News reporter Connor McGill joins us live now from Tucson, where Senator Mark Kelly is holding his own watch party. Connor, what's the mood over there? A lot of excitement and cheering at the Mark Kelly watch party, as you can see behind me. Roughly a couple hundred are gathered here in Tucson to cheer on Mark Kelly. Now we've seen early leads for Kelly, but there's still a lot of votes left to be counted. So vote, so supporters here are looking to wait just a little bit and wait things out. Nothing is official yet, but confidence is high here at the Mark Kelly party. Before the watch party, Kelly made trips to Phoenix and Tucson with with her with his his her husband Gabby Giffords. You know, Giffords, a notable Arizona politician. They traveled all across the state of Arizona, and they're ready for this moment tonight, and we will have to wait to see what happens. In Tucson, Connor McGill, Cronkite News. Election results are coming into the newsroom. Let's go ahead and take a look at the latest results. First up, for Governor. We have 4% of precincts reporting, with Katie Hobbs holding a lead over Carrie Lake. In this... For the U.S. Senate race, uh, for the Arizona Senate race, we have Mark Kelly uh, taking a slight lead over Blake Masters with 4% of precincts reporting. And in the race for Secretary of State with 4% of precincts reporting, we have Adrian Fontes, the Democratic candidate, holding a slight lead over Republican candidate Mark Fincham. And of the 4% precincts reporting for Attorney General, we have Chris Mays holding a lead over, over Abraham Hamaday. And for State Treasurer, excuse me, we have Mackenzie Hamill is at the Google touchscreen to take a deeper look at those results coming in. Hi, yes, we're looking at a few state races here in Arizona tonight as numbers are coming in. Um, as mentioned, Katie Hobbs, Democratic candidate, has the lead right now, a um, little less than 13%. We'll break that down a little bit more as we come over to our county. 
numbers. Um, right now, we'll take a look at Maricopa County, biggest county in Arizona. Um, Katie Hobbs still leading at about 58%. Republican candidate Carrie Lake at a um, little under 42%. Moving on to our next race of the night, Secretary of State Adrian Fontes in the lead right now. We'll take a look at our county numbers. Maricopa, um, Fontes still leading at about 500,000 votes, little more than that actually. Mark Fincham, Republican candidate, at about 320,000. For our Attorney General, Chris Mays um, against Abe Hamaday, we have May is in the lead as of right now, um, leading by about 174,000. In Maricopa, we're seeing um, May is still in the lead, 473,000 votes versus the 343,000 for Hamaday. And for state treasurer, this time we have Kimberly Yee leading um, just by a little bit, 50.1%. But if we take a look at Maricopa County, um, Martin Quesada is in the lead by about 8,000 votes um, at 409,000 and counting. Finally, we have our superintendent of public instruction uh, moving back to a Democratic candidate in the lead, Kathy Hoffman versus Tom Horn. Um, she's in the lead by about 164,000. And if we take a look at our Maricopa County numbers, um, we're seeing Kathy Hoffman still in the lead, 470,000 versus Tom Horn's 344,000. Now, these numbers are early, as mentioned, polls closed just over two hours ago, um, so we'll keep you updated as these numbers keep rolling in. At the Google touchscreen for Cronkite News, I'm Mackenzie Hamill. Thank you, Mackenzie. Late this afternoon, there were still long lines of voters waiting to cast their ballots. Cronkite News photojournalist Samantha Chow captured these long lines at Desert Hills Community Church with a drone. You can see people in line surrounding the building around 430 today. The Maricopa County Elections Department estimated there were more than 200 people waiting to vote. After the break, we'll be back with more election coverage. It's prime time on your time. Watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons. Your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. When you support Arizona PBS, you plant a seed. Seeds that provide educational outreach in our community. Seeds that put our digital resources to work. Seeds that foster the trusted news coverage you expect from PBS. And seeds that continue the amazing PBS programs you love. But our garden can't keep growing without your support. Visit our website to see all the ways you can help our garden grow. Plant a seed with Arizona PBS today. Cronkite News reporter Alexia Stanbridge is at the Democratic Watch Party where earlier tonight she talked with a Democratic candidate for Arizona Attorney General. We're here at the Arizona Democratic Watch Party with Chris Mays and I just have a couple of questions for you. How are you feeling tonight about the, this event and about um, the election as a whole? Well, listen, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to win our, our race for Attorney General and I'm optimistic because you know, everything I'm hearing is that, you know, independents and moderate Republicans are coming over to Democrats because we believe in democracy and the Republicans don't. You know, the, the, the Republicans that were nominated um, want to decertify the 2020 election. They're still talking about 2020 and 2022. They want to eliminate vote by mail. They want to eliminate reproductive rights. And, 
you know, the Democrats are the ones who are out there standing up for our election system, for the American democracy, for reproductive rights. I mean, I really mean it when I say American democracy runs through the state of Arizona. And I believe that Arizonans are going to come through for our country tonight. And what's your response to the lawsuit filed tonight um, to extend the polling places until 10 p.m.? Well, look, I thought I, it was it was an, not an appropriate lawsuit. It was filed very, very late. Um, as Maricopa County Board of Supervisor Chairman Bill Gates said and, and others, they resolve any issues that happened early this morning quickly. And people had the opportunity to vote. To vote. People were not disenfranchised. And, you know, people had an opportunity to vote all the way up until 7 p.m. So I think the judge did the right thing in rejecting that. The you know, polls, uh, you know, have closed. Uh, you know, time's up. And it's time to respect the will of the voters, whatever they decide tonight. Awesome. Thank you for talking with us. In Phoenix, Alexia Stanbridge, Cronkite News. Voters headed early to the polls in Tucson. There were long lines starting at 6 at Wood Memorial Library, but voters said they moved quickly. Cronkite News reporters caught up with two new residents who were eager to cast their ballots this morning. Yeah, we wanted to, you know, get to know our elected officials and we wanted to have our say, so we yeah. wanted to do our civil duty to get out there and vote. The two had just moved to Arizona and say voting matters. As mentioned, there were some early problems with voting tabulation machines in Maricopa County, resulting in a lawsuit and some frustrated voters. But at voting centers we visited across the valley, Olivia Doles tells us people found the process pretty easy. Thousands of people cast their ballots early Tuesday morning to fulfill their civic duty. Some have done this before. For others, this is all new. It is my first time voting, as a matter of fact, and I'm very excited because I am voting for to make sure that we keep the freedom of this great nation. Candidates were also out. Gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake casts her vote Tuesday afternoon at the post office in downtown Phoenix, while Democrat Katie Hobbs visits ASU in Tempe to encourage students to vote. I think um, this election is kind of important for our state. And I know the primary election is going to be super important as well. Early this morning, Maricopa County Elections Department reported problems at 60 vote centers with tabulation machines. Maricopa County has identified the solution for the tabulation issues at about 60 vote centers. County technicians have changed the printer settings, which seem to have res resolved the issue. It appears some of the printers were not producing dark enough timing marks on the ballots. This is one of the reasons why a lawsuit was filed in Maricopa County late Tuesday afternoon to keep voting locations open until 10 p.m. But voters we talked to in South Phoenix this morning say they had no trouble. It was excellent. It was fast. I went in, dropped off my ballot, and got my little sticker. A sticker to signify their voice being heard. In Phoenix, Olivia Doles, Cronkite News. Just before 7 tonight, a judge rules that the polls would not stay open past the original closing time. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. Okay, let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. History is today. You're chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS video app. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder. Almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait.
Art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. I'm gonna kick down every single door. I'm gonna show you what you never ever seen before. So come show you, I'm gonna show you. This is a real life story of a real life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Fight the power. Our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. The arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. The balance of power could also change in Congress. Sidney Whitty is at the Google touchscreen and shows us how it's shaking up for the House and Senate across the country. Yes, we'll be taking a look at the balance of power across Ooh. the U.S. Senate. We're going to be focusing on the four major states across this country. First, we're going to be looking at Pennsylvania. John Fetterman is in the lead with 49.4% of the vote, and Mehmet Oz has 48.2%. That's a very close race, with 67.4% of those votes being counted. Going over to the neighboring state, Ohio has 88% of those votes counted. And J.D. Vance has 53.6% of the votes, and Tim Ryan has 46.4%. Going south to Georgia, Herschel Walker has 49.3%, and Raphael Warnock has 48.7%. 84% of those votes are counted, and that is a very close race. As we go across the country to Arizona and localizing ourselves here, we can see that Mark Kelly is in the lead with 58.0% of the votes. And Blake Masters has 39.7. This has 47.7% .7 of the votes have currently been counted in the state of Arizona. At the Google touchscreen, Sydney Whitty for Cronkite News. Both parties have been courting young voters throughout this election, and there are a number of issues that has this demographic energized. Annie Levino was at a voting center at ASU this morning and talked to voters about why they are out. A steady stream of students took the opportunity to vote at ASU's Tempe campus this morning. Voters say there are a lot of issues during this midterm election that will impact them, and they Voter. Yep. As Arizonans show up to the polls today, some might see a difference in their voter status. The Arizona Secretary of State Office reported a drop of almost 150,000 active registered voters from April to late October. Cronkite News reporter John Brown has more from our Washington Bureau. A recent report from the Arizona Secretary of State's office shows the number of active registered voter numbers fell from over 4.2 million in April to just above 4.1 million by late October, a 3.5% drop in just six months. That is a little troubling because it almost implies that voters are disengaged. That's concerning for us as a league because we want voters to be engaged. That's in addition to a surge in the number of inactive voters, those still on the rolls who haven't voted in more than two elections. They jumped by two-thirds, from 419,000 to more than 689,000 in the same period. And although Shorn finds the numbers troubling, Assistant Arizona Secretary of State Allie Bones says it's pretty typical to see these kinds of shifts. So it's not that uncommon for us to see that um, drop in an active voter registration status. And it doesn't mean that a voter registration is canceled. That person is still registered as a voter, which is why we show both the active and the inactive. So what qualifies an active and inactive voter? According to the Secretary of State's office, an active voter has all information up to date. Inactive voters are still registered and can vote, but are in danger of being disenrolled once two election mailings sent to their registered address are returned undeliverable 
and the voter has not submitted a new registration form or updated their address. Garrett Archer says it is normal for numbers to dip due to list cleaning and maintenance, but adds that younger people in Arizona might be a contributing factor to the increase in inactive voters. So what we're seeing right now is sort of uh, there was a balance of people that may have been college students, younger individuals that were signed up to vote, uh, and then they've subsequently moved out of Arizona. If your voter registration status is inactive for two federal election cycles, it may end up being subsequently canceled. In Washington, John Brown, Cronkite News. We'll be right back after this quick break. Let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. History is today. You're chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS Video app. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder, almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait. Art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. This is a real life story of a real life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Fight the power. Our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. The arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. Earlier this evening, we spoke with Democratic Representative Ruben Gallego. Let's hear what he had to say. But look, I serve in the Arizona State Legislature when there was only 20 Democrats and 40 Republicans. I still got things done. My, my charge from the, the voters of Arizona, Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, even if we're in the minority, I had to find a way to work with what I can for the best of Arizona. So hopefully I can find, figure out a way to work with the Republicans if they win. Uh, got to focus on, really what we got to go back and focus on is on water and drought uh, and a lot of our land being taken by foreign companies. But, you know, figure out a way how to come, out, come across the aisle and do it. And uh, at the end of the day, I think we'll be successful no matter what. Marjorie Taylor Greens aren't the people that work with anybody. They don't even work with Republicans, right? They're not very successful passing legislation. So it's not, you don't work with the Marjorie Taylor Greens. You don't work with the extremes. You work with the people that are more moderate or even are conservative but want to work across the aisle. Uh, but there's some, some of these extremists that they don't, really, they don't want to work anyway. They just want to go on TV, rant, and tweet really crazy things, but they don't want to actually get done to legislation. So I don't have to work with them because they don't want to work at all. I'm going to work with the Republicans. They want to work, and then we'll get things done. And if we, da we can't, then we'll just agree to disagree. But, you know, at least we're going to try. Election results are coming into the newsroom. Let's take a look at the latest results. As we look at the U.S. Representative District 1 here in Arizona, we have the Democratic candidate Jevin Hodge in the lead over Republican candidate David Schweikert. And for the U.S. Representative District number 2, we have Tom O'Halloran, the Democratic uh, nom uh, candidate, uh, with 51 percent over Eli Crane, the Republican candidate, with 49 percent. And for District 3, we have Ruben Gallego, who you just saw on the screen, with a lead over Republican candidate Jeff Zink. 
and the U.S. Representative District Number 4. We have Greg Stanton, the Democratic candidate, with 63 percent, and Kelly Cooper, the Republican candidate, with 37 percent. Continuing on to District Number 5, we have the Republican candidate, Andy Biggs, with a 48 percent of the vote share at just over 72,000, leading Democratic, Repo Democratic candidate, Javier Ramos, at 69,000. And the U.S. Representative District Number 6, Kristen Engel, has a lead over Juan Siscomani, the Republican candidate. And in District Number 7, Democratic candidate Raul Grivalha has a 66,000 vote margin, as Republican candidate Luis Pozzolo has 28,000 for 30 percent of the vote. For Proposition 129, which requires single subject on citizen ballot measures, the yes vote has a slight lead over the no vote with 52 percent. And for Prop 130, property tax break for disabled veterans, the yes vote is leading, excuse me, the no vote has 54 percent of the vote and the yes vote has 46 percent of the vote. For Proposition 131, which creates office, uh, the office of lieutenant governor, um, the no vote is leading with 54 percent over the yes vote at 46 percent. That will wrap up our coverage here on PBS for this channel. Switch to 8.1 for continuing coverage from Cronkite News. And Arizona Horizon will have results from 10 to 11 tonight. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching Rockite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Edison LaCour. And I'm Geraldine Torellis. If you're just joining us, we have live crews out across the state. From the Republican Watch Party in Scottsdale to the Democratic Watch Party and Election Central in Phoenix, as well as the Watch Party for Senator Mark Kelly in Tucson. We'll get to each of them, we'll get to each of them in just a moment. But first, Cronkite News reporter Adam Schwager is joining us live now from Scottsdale at the GOP watch party. Excuse me, Alexia Stanbridge. Adam, what's the mood like there? Well, the people behind me are patiently awaiting the results of Arizona's elections. They have some reason to celebrate as races from around the nation are coming in. Arizona officials want to ride what they believe to be a nationwide red wave to victories up and down the Arizona ballot. While no one from the major Arizona statewide ticket has spoken yet, and people are waiting to hear from the woman of the hour, Carrie Lake herself, people have been coming up every 15 minutes or so to talk about key victories or leads in states like Georgia, Florida, Texas, and Ohio. The people behind me hope that that's going to be indicative of what happens in Arizona either tonight or sometime later this week. In Scottsdale, Adam Schwager, Cronkite News. Thank you, Adam. Now let's head out to the Democrats' watch party. Alexia Stanbridge has been there all afternoon. Who have you seen there, Alexia? Yes, um, behind me you'll hear an enthusiastic crowd. Sometimes they've been chanting, sometimes booing. Um, there's people of all ages attending here. And uh, I spoke with some of the people of the, in the crowd, and some people are feeling confident, but most of all, they're feeling nervous. The candidates have taken turns talking, like behind me right now, talking about issues of abortion, talking about issues of education, and other Arizona topics. Um, Adrian Fonta spoke earlier this evening and said that he saw some numbers and is feeling good, but um, there's still a long night ahead, so we will keep you updated throughout the evening at the Arizona Democratic Watch Party in Phoenix. Alexia Stambridge, Cronkite News. Election results are coming into the newsroom. Let's take a look at the latest results. For governor, Katie Hobbs holds a slight lead over Republican candidate Carrie Lake. In this race, we have uh, for uh, Senator, we have Mark Kelly with a lead over Blake Masters at 58 percent. In the race for the Secretary of State, Democratic candidate Adrian Fontes holds a lead over Republican candidate Mark Fincham. 
And for Attorney General, the Democrat nominee Chris Mays is at 57 percent with the lead over Abraham Hamaday, the Republican candidate. For state, for state treasurer, we have Martine Quezada at 50 percent and Kimberly Yee, the Republican nominee, at 50 percent. They're at a tie. Crowd Guy News reporter Jacob Flores is joining us from Election Central and is talking to Lydia Guzman with Chicanos por la Causa. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. We're here at the Maricopa County Tabulation Center here where the mood is a bit more tame than it was back in the 2020 elections. We've been uh, seeing security beefed up a little here. We've seen helicopters, drones, as well as cops on horseback. I was able, able to speak with Lydia Guzman with the Chicano por la Casa about what they're doing to get the vote out. And you were explaining to me what you were doing today. Could you tell the audience exactly what you were up to today? Sure. So, so today we're going and visiting several different polling places. Uh, what we're doing is we're doing some Facebook Lives on our Chicanos por la Causa Facebook page to encourage people to vote. And we were giving live updates so that people know if there's any lines or you know what the process is there and giving tips, for example, tips on um, bringing in their their early ballots or, you know, or just other tips about ID. So these are, we're just trying to make sure that we get out the Latino vote. So specifically the Latino vote and exactly how long have you guys been running and doing this? So we announced back in April that we invested $10 million to get out the Latino vote. That means voter registration. Then we're also reaching uh, registered voters, Latino registered voters that historically don't come out to vote. These are the hardest to reach voters. And with our campaign, the, the Latino Loud Si Se Vota campaign, um, we're hoping that we would increase our, the Latino turnout to significantly have an impact on Arizona's midterm elections. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Lydia. Okay, I'm just going to do my tag out. Okay. In Phoenix, Jacob Flores, Cronkite News. The balance of power could also change at the U.S. Capitol. Sydney Witte is at the Google touchscreen with a look at other national races. Yes, we're taking a look at the balance of power across the U.S. Senate. We're going to be focusing on four major states across the country. Those are Pennsylvania, Ohio, Georgia, and Arizona. First, we're going to be looking at Pennsylvania, where John Fetterman has 49.6% of the vote so far, and Mehmet Oz at 48.1%. Only 74.5% of those votes are currently counted. We're going to go to the neighboring state of Ohio, where J.D. Vance currently has 53.6% of the votes and Tim Ryan has 46.4 and 92.3% of those votes are currently counted. Going south into Georgia, Herschel Walker has 49% of the vote so far in Raphael War knock with 49.0. This is a very close and tight race right now with 85.7% of the votes being counted. Going across this country, we're going to localize ourselves here in Arizona. Mark Kelly has 58.0% of the vote currently and Blake Masters at 39.7. Here in Arizona, only 47.9% of those votes have all currently been counted. At the Google touchscreen, Sydney Witte for Cronkite News. We have more election coverage on the way. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. History is today. Chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS Video app. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder. Almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait.
art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. I'm a kicked out every single door. I'm a show you what you never ever seen before. So come show you, I'm a show you. This is a real life story of a real life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Fight the power. Our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. The arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. The Naleo Educational Fund projects more than 600,000 Latinos will cast ballots in Arizona. Cronkite News reporter Jimena Vera spoke with Latino voters in South Phoenix about what is driving their vote. Today, voters in South Phoenix shared the main reasons that motivate them to vote. I care about our wages, making sure that we have good living conditions and we have um, access to affordable housing. One of the biggest issues was the 308, um, where the Dreamers can pay the in-state um, college tuition instead of the out-of-state tuition. Denise Ceballos, candidate for Phoenix City Council and a first-time immigrant voter, says inflation is the main reason for voting. And to make sure that our finance, our, our bank account is, is where it needs to be for us to be able to pay our rent and put food on our table. For Manuel Escobedo, voting is a family tradition. I've been voting since uh, I can remember a long time ago when I got at the age to vote. Around 1.3 million Hispanics are eligible to vote in Arizona. Experts say the Latino vote will be decisive in today's elections. In Phoenix, Jimena Vera, Cronkite News. Election results are coming into the newsroom. Let's take a look at the latest results in Arizona congressional races. For the U.S. Representative District Number 1, we have Democratic candidate Je Jevin Hodge with 57 percent over David Schweikert, uh, the Republican candidate. In Congressional District Number 2, Tom O'Halloran, incumbent Democratic candidate, is a, has a slight edge over Republican candidate, retired U.S. Navy SEAL Eli Crane. The U.S. Representative District Number 3, we have Democrat Ruben Gallego with 80 percent over Jeff Sink, the Republican, at 20. In District Number 4, Democratic candidate Greg Stanton holds a lead over Republican candidate Kelly Cooper. The U.S. Representative District Number 5 race, we have Javier Ramos with 45%, uh, um, slightly behind Andy Biggs, the Republican candidate, at 48. We're tracking the number of votes for several propositions on the ballot today. Mackenzie Hamill is at the Google touchscreen with the latest. Hi, yes, we'll take a look at four key propositions um, in this Arizona election. Um, first one being Proposition 131, having to do with the creation of Lieutenant Governor. Um, this would be uh, a person who would take over a role if our current governor were to pass away. Right now, we have majority of the people voting yes on this proposition at 54.27%. Um, and then we'll move on to Proposition 211. This has to do with political campaigns being required to disclose the donations that they're giving if passed. Um, even more of a majority voting yes on this proposition, 76.89%. For Proposition 308, this has to do with non-citizen students being allowed to pay in-state tuition going to Arizona universities. Um, majority of this one is also voting yes, 55%, little bit of a closer race, um, but we'll stay tuned for this one. And finally, Proposition 309, this has to do with um, creating additional restrictions when it comes to voter identification. Um, we don't have majority leaning yes on this one. It's actually a no. 50, oh, sorry, votes just changed. Um, majority is voting yes on this one. Um, as you can see, numbers are still rolling in 51.42%. Um, votes are early. Keep, um, keep on tuning in for more updates. Mackenzie Hamill at the Google Touchscreen for Cronkite News. Former journalists are calling out Arizona politicians during midterm election races for, quote, attacking and scapegoating the, me the media for political gain. 
Mackenzie Hamill talked with reporters to find out why they say this time is different than other points in history. We are facing unprecedented threats against a free press right now. On the streets outside ASU's Cronkite School of Journalism, former journalists spoke out about their worries that politicians are undermining the freedom of the press, particularly Arizona candidates. They say it's become increasingly harder to be a reporter due to the attacks on the profession. We are just people. We go to your churches, we go to your grocery stores, we have children at your school, we are children of, of people, we are brothers and sisters, we don't deserve this. Some recent examples of attacks on the press include a Blake Masters tweet calling the media malicious and mentally ill, and Carrie right Lake now. referring to it journalists evil as evil in, in her world. campaign for governor. The media is the virus. The former journalists say they are not only worried about themselves, but for democracy as a whole. This is how they do it in Russia, in Cuba, where my family's from. The assault on democracy is twofold, undermine journalists and weaken our elections. In the past, political figures, including those in the Democratic Party, have also publicly criticized the media. The Obama administration said it would deal with the press the way it would an opponent. And in Hillary Clinton's 2017 memoir, she writes, I was tempted to make voodoo dolls of certain members of the press and stick them full of pins. But defaming remarks about journalists date all the way back to our founding fathers. Thomas Jefferson is quoted as saying, nothing can now be believed, which is seen in the newspaper, that a man who never looks into a newspaper is better informed than he who reads them. And there's Richard Nixon. He was one of the president's most critical of the press. But the group says this time is different because the attacks are institutionalized and the threats feel real. If we are not vigilant when we go vote in this state and around the country, then we will live to regret it. The former reporters say this isn't a formal group or political movement, but simply a call to action. No other events are scheduled at this time. Now let's check in on Pima County in Tucson. Connor McGill is there and is speaking with Steve Farley, the former Arizona state senator. The excitement and cheers are still going on here at the Mark Kelly Watch Party. And here with me is former Arizona State Senator and Governor candidate Steve Farley. Steve, take me through the mindset that these candidates might be thinking about right now. Well, I tell you, everyone's very nervous because it looks really good for Democrats right now. But you got to lead by about 10 points with how many Republicans were voting in the, uh, in the election day ballots, particularly Maricopa County. So anyone statewide, anyone who's running in Maricopa County has got to have at least a 10-point lead by the, least, the, the end of this evening. So when those waves of Election Day ballots come, where Republicans are leading 55 to 17, they, they need to withstand that. After, and it could take weeks. Obviously, Steve, we're talking about um, margins right now and, yes. and things maybe could be close. Um, oh, yeah. As a, a former candidate, how do you take that in consideration? Do we, are we going to expect Kelly to take the stage tonight with a victory speech or will we wait a couple days? Well, Mark Kelly is ahead by a lot, so I think he has a really good chance of winning. I don't know what his strategy will be, whether he's going to be a victory speech or not. I think we, we all need to be a little careful and respect the process and make sure that we're, we're, we get all the votes in. There's no possibility for the other person winning before you declare victory. Because a lot is going to happen in the next couple of weeks as the, as the ballots get counted. And uh, so far, these results are primarily all about the, uh, um, the early ballots that have been counted as of Friday. There's still the early ballots that got dropped off on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and today. And there's election day. Thank you, Steve, for that Thank insight. You. Back to you guys in the studio. More election coverage is on the way. We'll be right back. Hey, let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. 
History is today. Chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS Video app. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder. Almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait. Art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. I'm a kicked out every single door. I'm a show you never ever seen before. So control you, I'm a show you. This is a real life story of a real life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Look at me now. Fight the power. Look at me now. Our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. The arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's head back out to the GOP watch party with Cronkite News reporter Carolina Hassett. Carolina, how are things looking in Scottsdale? Yeah, as you can see, the room behind me is a lot more crowded than it was earlier in the day today. There's been a lot of energy and excitement and cheers and even some booze as voters watch the results on the big screen behind me. The watch party began with GOP Chairwoman Kelly Ward kicking things off. And so far, we've heard from several other speakers, such as Annie Biggs and Kevin Thompson. But everyone here is wondering if Carrie Lake will take the stage this evening. In Scottsdale, Carolina Hassett, Cronkite News. Now let's head back out to the Democrats' watch party. Yori Han has been talking to partygoers all evening. The energy is still high, and earlier tonight we spoke with Congressman Ruben Gallego about whether he feels he can work with Republicans. I serve in the Arizona State Legislature when there's only 20 Democrats and 40 Republicans. I still got things done. My, my charge from the, the voters of Arizona, Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, even if we're in the minority, I had to find a way to work with what I can for the best of Arizona. So hopefully I can find, figure out a way to work with the Republicans if they win. Uh, got to focus on, really what we got to go back and focus on is on water and drought uh, and a lot of our land being taken by foreign companies. But, you know, figure out a way how to come, out, come across the aisle and do it. And uh, at the end of the day, I think we'll be successful no matter what. Marjorie Taylor Greens aren't the people that work with anybody. They don't even work with Republicans, right? They're not very successful at passing legislation. So it's not, you don't work with the Marjorie Taylor Greens. You don't work with the extremes. You work with the people that are more moderate or even are conservative but want to work across the aisle. Uh, but there's some, some of these extremists that they don't, really, they don't want to work anyway. They just want to go on TV, rant, and tweet really crazy things, but they don't want to actually get done to legislation. So I don't have to work with them because they don't want to work at all. I'm going to work with the Republicans. They want to work, and then we'll get things done. And if we, da we can't, then we'll just disagree to disagree. But, you know, at least we're going to try. In Phoenix, Yuri Hahn, Cronkite News. More election coverage on the way. We'll be right back. Let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. History is today. Chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS video app. 
on Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder, almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait. Art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. I'm a kicked out every single door. I'm a show you you've never ever seen before. So control you, I'm gonna show you. This is a real life story of a real life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Look at now. Fight the power. Look at now. Look at our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. And the arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's take one last look at the numbers. Uh, for the race for governor, we have Katie Hobbs at 57% with over 750,000 votes. In the race for U.S. Senate, Democratic candidate Mark Kelly leads Blake Masters with 58% of the vote at over 775,000. For Secretary of State, Adrian Fontes, the Democrat nominee, has the lead with 59% and over 770,000 votes. For the race for Attorney General, Democratic candidate Chris Mays has 57% of the vote, where Republican candidate Abraham Hamaday has 44%. For State Treasurer, we have Martin Quesada with 50% uh, at, with over 650,000 votes, tied with Kimberly Lee at 50%. For the Superintendent of Public Instruction, Democratic candidate Kathy Hoffman has 57% of the vote, while Republican candidate Tom Horn has 44%. U.S. Representative District No. 1 race, we have Jevin, Ho Jevin Hodge with 57% um, over David Schweikert at 43%. In District 2, we have incumbent Democratic candidate Tom O'Halloran with 51% of the vote, leading Eli Crane in a tight race. And for U.S. Representative District Number 3, we have Ruben Gallego with 80% and over 58,000 votes, leading Jeff Zink. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Arizona Horizon's Ted Simons now takes over our election coverage here on Arizona PBS. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.